Hey there! Ever looked at those jaw-dropping underwater photos and wondered, how do they do that? Mm -hmm. We're about to take a deep dive into the world of underwater photography. Your sources are prepped. And believe me, it's way more than just pointing and shooting. It's about capturing a whole different universe, mm -hmm. really. Constantly moving, full of surprises. And light behaves so differently down there. It's like learning photography all over again, but with a whole new set of rules. Okay, so let's set the scene. Imagine you're diving off the coast of Indonesia, crystal clear water, vibrant coral reefs teeming with life, and you, armed with your underwater camera, ready to capture it all. First things first, gear. What do you absolutely need to make this underwater photography dream a reality? Well, let's start with the heart of it all, the camera. Our sources actually suggest compact cameras as a great starting point. Don't underestimate them. Many have dedicated underwater modes that take the guesswork out of those tricky settings. Plus, they're lighter and easier to handle when you're navigating currents. That makes sense. You don't want to be wrestling with a massive camera rig when you're trying to capture a school of fish darting through a shipwreck. Exactly. <laughs> but if you're really serious about taking your underwater photography to the next level, mirrorless or DSLR cameras are the way to go. They offer more manual control, which is essential when you're dealing with the ever-changing conditions underwater. More control sounds great. But before we get ahead of ourselves, I know you can't just take your regular camera underwater. That's where those rugged underwater housings come in. You're absolutely right. Think of it as a personalized submarine for your camera. It keeps everything dry and protects it from the immense pressure of the deep. Choosing a housing that's specifically designed for your camera model mm. and never, ever skimp on quality here. Right. A leak could ruin your expensive gear in an instant. Ouch. Yeah. Not the kind of water feature you want in your photos, so... The camera is safe and sound in its housing. What about lenses? This is where things get really interesting. It's like choosing between a telescope and a microscope, each revealing a completely different perspective of the underwater world. I love that analogy. So yeah. we're looking at different lenses for different purposes. You got it. A wide angle lens is your go-to for capturing those awe-inspiring panoramic shots, hmm. like massive coral reefs, shipwrecks, or even those iconic shots of divers dwarfed by the sheer scale of the underwater world. Those are the ones that really take your breath away. But then there's that whole other universe of macro photography. Those up close and personal shots of the tiny critters that most people never even notice. Exactly. And for those, you'll need a macro lens. These babies allow you to capture incredible detail on even the tiniest subjects. Like those intricate patterns on a nudibranch, branch. Or the delicate tentacles of a feather duster worm. It's like revealing a hidden universe in a single drop of water. And let's not forget about light. It behaves so differently underwater. You've got to bring your own sunshine down there. You see, water acts like a giant filter, absorbing those warm, vibrant colors we see so easily on land. Reds, oranges, yellows. They start to disappear, even just a few feet below the surface. So everything starts to look kind of like blue and green, like those old vacation photos from the 90s. Exactly. And that's where strobes come in. They provide that extra burst of light that brings back the vibrant colors and intricate details, making your subjects really pop against the blue background. It's like they're suddenly illuminated on a theater stage, revealing all those hidden hues. Exactly. Now, yeah. video lights provide continuous lighting, which is great for, you guessed it, mm -hmm. shooting video. They're also helpful for photographers who want to see how their lighting will look before they press the shutter. Think of it like having a constant spotlight on your subject revealing all those details in real time. Gotcha. Okay, so we've got our camera, housing, lenses, and lighting sorted out. Now let's talk camera settings. This is where things always get a bit intimidating for me, even on land. I hear you, but don't worry. Here's the thing. Underwater, auto mode is rarely your friend. It's like trying to navigate a maze blindfolded. To really capture those magical underwater moments, you need to take control and learn to shoot in manual mode. Okay. I'm taking a deep breath and diving into manual mode, but seriously, why is it so crucial underwater? Imagine this. You're trying to photograph a school of fish swirling around a coral head. Sunlight is filtering through the water, creating this constantly shifting pattern of light and shadow. Pretty amazing. That sounds incredibly beautiful and challenging to photograph. You got it. Yeah. Auto mode just can't keep up with those dynamic conditions. But in manual mode, you're the maestro. You're in control of the entire orchestra of settings. Okay. I'm intrigued. Walk us through the key players in this underwater orchestra. First up, ISO. Think of this as your camera's sensitivity to light. 
in low light situations, mm -hmm. like deep underwater or on a cloudy day. You'll need to crank up your ISO to capture more light. But here's the trade-off. A higher ISO can introduce noise or grain into your images. It's like turning up the volume on a speaker. You hear the music louder, but you might also get some hiss and crackle. That's a great analogy. Now, no. let's talk about aperture. This is like the pupil of your camera's eye. Yeah. Controlling how much light enters the lens. A wider aperture, like f2.8, lets in more light and gives you that beautiful blurry background effect, which is fantastic for isolating your subject. So if I want that dreamy, ethereal look with the background melting away, I need a wider aperture. Exactly. But a narrower aperture, like f8, is your best bet when you need everything in focus, mm -hmm. like a vast reef scene or a school of fish stretching into the distance. So it's like choosing between a portrait mode and a landscape mode, depending on what you want to emphasize. Precisely. Now, the third musketeer in our manual mode trio is shutter speed. This one is all about freezing action or embracing motion blur. It's like the difference between a perfectly timed snapshot and a painting that captures movement and energy. You're getting it. A fast shutter speed, like 1 250th of a second or faster, or faster, freezes motion. Think a shark darting through the water or a diver perfectly suspended in midair during a backflip. Okay, I need to see this backflipping diver photo, but what about when you want to showcase motion, like the flow of water? Then you'd go for a slower shutter speed. This can create that dreamy, ethereal effect, like those silky waterfalls you see in landscape photography. It can be incredibly artistic when used intentionally underwater. It's like capturing the dance of the ocean itself. You're getting it. What? Now, one last essential setting we need to talk about, and this one often gets overlooked, white balance. Remember how we talked about water absorbing those warm, vibrant colors? Well, uh -huh. white balance is your secret weapon to bring them back to life. So it's like color correcting your photos before you even take them. You got it. Hmm. Many cameras have underwater white balance presets that do a decent job, but for ultimate control, oh. especially if you're shooting in raw format, you'll want to learn how to set your white balance manually. Okay. I'm adding master manual white balance to my underwater photography to-do list. It's a game changer. Trust me. It helps neutralize those color casts and ensures that the vibrant coral reefs and colorful fish you're seeing with your own eyes are accurately represented in your photographs. It's like fine-tuning a musical instrument, getting those colors perfectly in tune with what you're seeing. Exactly. Okay, so we've nailed our settings. We're shooting in manual mode like pros. What's next? This is the part I always struggle with, even on land. Composition. How do you compose a stunning shot when you're literally surrounded by the subject? That's a great question. And it's something all underwater photographers grapple with. Um, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer beauty and chaos of the underwater world. Right. It's like trying to choose a favorite star in the entire Milky Way. You've got to remember, those composition rules you learned on land still apply underwater. Rule of thirds, leading lines, negative space, they all come into play. They do, but it's like they take on a whole new dimension underwater. Absolutely. For example, think about leading lines on land. It might be a winding road or a row of trees drawing your eye into the scene. Underwater, you can use the natural formations of the reef, like mm -hmm. a coral wall or a school of fish swimming in formation, yeah. to create those dynamic leading lines. Um, instead of fighting against the chaos, you're using it to your advantage, guiding the viewer's eye through the image. Exactly. And then there's negative space. Mm -hmm. This one often throws people off, mm -hmm. but it's so effective underwater. Think about those shots where a single majestic creature like a shark or a ray is surrounded by the vastness of the blue ocean. That blue water becomes the negative space. Right. It really makes the subject stand out. Exactly. It emphasizes the immensity of the ocean and the often solitary nature of these incredible animals. Okay. So we're using those classic composition rules, hmm. but adapting them for the underwater world. Any other tips for taking our photos from good to wow? Get close. Closer than you think you need to be, yeah. especially with those wide angle shots. Filling the frame with your subject, mm. minimizing that extra background noise yeah. can make a huge difference. So if I'm photographing a giant sea turtle, I want to get up close and personal. As close as safely possible. You want to capture those intricate details in this leathery skin, those soulful eyes. Those are the things that create connection with the viewer. And that goes for those smaller critters too. Right. Macro photography is all about getting up close and personal. Absolutely. Yeah. But with macro, stability is key. You're dealing with such a shallow depth of field that even the slightest movement can throw your entire shot out of focus. 
Buoyancy control is absolutely crucial for macro photography. Just you want to be a stable platform for your camera so you can really focus on those minute details. Speaking of challenges, mm -hmm. our listeners sent in a bunch of questions about common underwater photography hurdles. And this one always comes up, backscatter. It's like the nemesis of every underwater photographer. It's those tiny specks that show up in your photos caused by your flash reflecting off particles in the water. Exactly. And it can drive you crazy. But don't worry. There are ways to combat it. First and foremost, strobe positioning. You want to angle your strobes outwards, away from your camera lens, to minimize that backscatter effect. So it's like creating a cone of light that illuminates the subject but doesn't bounce right back into the lens. Precisely. It takes some practice to find the sweet spot. Okay. But it makes a world of difference. You know, for me, the real magic happens after the dive, when I'm back home. Scrolling through the images on my computer, it's like discovering a hidden treasure chest. The editing process. That's where you get to bring out the full potential of your underwater images. It's true. Even the most stunning underwater photos can benefit from a little bit of editing love. From those industry standard programs like Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop to more beginner-friendly alternatives, yeah. it really depends on your budget and how deep you want to dive into the world of photo editing. And don't be afraid to experiment. That's how you learn and develop your own unique style. It's about finding the tools and techniques that speak to you and bring your creative vision to life. But remember, even though we're enhancing those colors and details, it's important to stay true to the essence of what you captured underwater. We're not trying to create something artificial. We're just revealing the magic that was already there. Okay, I feel like I could talk about underwater photography for hours, but I know our listeners are eager to get out there and start capturing their own amazing images. What parting words of wisdom can we offer them? Patience, practice, and perseverance are key. Don't get discouraged if your first few attempts don't turn out exactly how you envision them. It's a journey of discovery. Exactly. Every dive is a learning experience. Keep experimenting. Keep exploring. And most importantly, never lose that sense of wonder and awe for the underwater world. And you know, if you want to take a deep dive into a specific underwater photography technique, let us know. We're always up for exploring a new facet of this captivating art form. Until then, happy bubbles, everyone. <laughs>